Welcome back everyone. This is part two of my videos on the application Frita and in this one we're going to explore some of the other commands and tools that we can use beyond what was covered in the first video. In the first video I covered creating some widgets and layouts on the boards so if you're interested in that be sure to click the link and watch the first video. So for this one let's go again ahead and get started and just to show you what I've got here I've created a new project and I have given it a folder and I'll open that folder up right now. As you can see there's nothing in it, it is completely empty. I just assigned an icon and that was it. So we've got a very bare bones empty project. So the first thing I'm going to cover is this little timer here. And you may be familiar with a concept that they call the Pomodoro technique. And what that is, is basically you work for a period of time, you take a break, and after every four periods of work you take a longer break and in here you can manage that or you can set some up for yourself so let's go ahead and set that up and i'm just going to call this one i'm going to add a new timer and i'm just going to call this one test and conveniently built in just to demonstrate this i'm going to run this test one here which is just six seconds a very short one i'm going to have it give me a desktop notification um, it's going to give me some audio and that is it. It is configured so I'm just going to go done editing and now all I have to do is go down here click on, I don't have to click on it, I just roll over and I can start this one here by just tapping on it and the timer starts and you can see it counting down and at the end I'll get a desktop notification and a sound and that's it. That, that is how that one works. So you can set yourself up some timers and reminders here. So the next thing I'm going to cover is this toolkit here. And if I hover over it right now, you can see there's nothing in here. I need to manage my tools. And what the tools are here, you can, if there are tools you use regularly, you can have like a quick link to opening and accessing those tools. So for example, let's go into manage tools. Let's say one of the things I'm doing is I'm writing some code. I'm making an iOS app. So I'm going to click the add tool. I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it Xcode. And now I'm actually going to select the application. I'm going to click on there and I'm going to go along, scroll through, and I'm actually going to find Xcode on my machine and just go open. And that's now configured. Now, another way you can do this is you can actually do some drag and drop. And so I will show that when we get to another setup using the commands. But I just want you to be aware of it now. So when I go to the toolkit, you can see that I now have Xcode here. So what I can do is if I click on there, it's actually going to go ahead and you'll see that it will open Xcode for me. So if there's a particular series of tools that I use all the time with this project, I can go ahead and set those up conveniently to be listed for quick access without having to find them on my system. So I'm just going to go ahead and close Xcode. So that's the toolkits there. Okay, so next up I'm going to do links. I'll come back to commands in a minute, but I want to cover links quickly because this is a, a pretty quick, easy one to understand. If I go to manage links and I click add item, and I'm going to call this one my website, basically you're adding a link. So what I can do is I'm just going to put the address for my website here. And I'm going to say go ahead and open it in the Chrome browser, for example. And the opening method, I will have a default behavior for now. You can see you have other options for opening new tabs, new windows, those kind of things. I'm going to leave it at the default behavior. and I'm just going to go done editing. So now when I go to the links menu, you can see it's got my website here and the icon for my website. And when I click it, you can see it's going to open Chrome and it's going to open that web address right there in my website appears just like so. So if you have a lot of reference material, for example, or documentation that you search online, those kind of things, or you're working on a web project, you could link to the test server, the development server or production, whatever you want, and just open it up very quickly there in whichever browser you want. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Okay, so now we have searches. Now in the searches, this is kind of interesting and actually very clever. So there's some pre-built in ones here for you. And what you can do is you can add a search facility for either a search engine or a particular website, something like that on a particular subject. 
And I think that the best way to maybe explain this in an understandable way is to actually go ahead and show you. So I'm going to go manage search scopes and I'm going to add a new one. And I'm actually going to add my website in here just to show that you can actually set this up any way you want it to be. And I'm going to say that it's a custom engine and I'm just going to paste in the URL here. So I know that this is the search URL for my particular website. And if you look here, it says that you can put this query on the end. So I'm actually going to go ahead and add that in here. And I'm just going to go done editing. So now on the searches, what you're going to find is I have down here my website. And if I just click here, you can see search through peterwidham.com. I'm just going to click in there and I'm going to search for, let's say Swift UI view controller, because I know I have a lot of blog posts on Swift development and I'm just going to hit return. And I'm going to tell it to do it in Google, in Chrome, sorry. And you can see it's opened up my website and I know that the search URL criteria for my own website, and I've actually performed a search right there from Frita into the web browser for Swift UI view controller on a custom hosted domain. And here's the results. So I think you can see how cool that can be and how awesome it can be to use, say for example, maybe you or your company has a wiki, you could put a URL in there to search that wiki or a, you know, a intranet portal, something like that, or just use search engines. So that can actually be very powerful a way to have searches built in, in a pre-programmed way into Frita. Okay, so now we come to the last one, commands. And this is immensely powerful once you use it beyond the scope of Frita itself. And I'm gonna demonstrate a couple of different things here. And I'm doing this on a Mac, but the same applies to any of the other platforms. So if I go to commands, there's nothing here right now, and I'm going to go manage commands. And I think the best way to explain what a command is, is to just go ahead and create a couple of different examples. So I'm going to say add command. I'm just going to give this one a name. I'll just call it command part one. And there's some options here. And let's talk about these quickly. I'll just bring the list up. So I can either execute a command line in the project directory. I can copy the directory to a project directory, or I can copy project directory to another directory. Let's start with an easy one. And I'm going to say copy project directory to another directory. And an example why I might do this, I may be working on a website and I have all of my source files and everything else in one folder and the release version, I want to copy it to another folder where it's maybe cleaned out, something like that. And I know that everything in that folder is what needs to be uploaded to the website. So what we have here is target directory. Now, remember the first one is the project directory. So that's the source. So the target is going to be where we want to end up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop and I'm just going to call it destination. And I'm going to open it up. And as you can see, it's completely empty right now. And let's just bring up a couple of different things. Okay. Here's my project folder and that's empty as well. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to create a couple of new folders and I'll have one called, let's say source. Uh, let's have another one called images. Okay, so they're in the project directory. Now, if we go back to here, okay, we can set this target directory. Now, you remember early on, I was saying about how you can do drag and drop. Well, let's do that, right? So on my desktop, I've got the icon for the destination folder, and I'm just going to drag it and release over the target and set it that way. The other way, of course, is I can go and find it, but I just wanted to demonstrate how that works. Now the options here, copy contents only, I can tell it to copy the contents of the project directory only without the directory itself, without the parent folder, as it were. And so that's what I want. And I'm going to tell it to always overwrite because this is my destination. I want it to not ask me any questions. I just want it to overwrite the stuff in that destination folder. Be very careful of that and make sure that that is what you want to do. So I'm going to say done editing and 
Let's just quickly review again. We've got the project folder with two empty folders in it and the destination with nothing in it. Now if I go in back here on the commands, I'm going to say command part one, nothing happens. Unfortunately, you don't get a visual cue that something has happened, which is unfortunate. And I hope that maybe in a future version, they do something about that. But let's go back and look at my two finder windows. And you can see it's done what it's supposed to. It took these two folders from the my project folder and it copied them into the destination folder. So I hope that makes sense and you understand what's going on there. Um, like I said, it'd be nice if we had a visual cue that it had done it successfully, but you know, we've got what we've got right now. So that's one thing. Now I'm going to give a, a slightly more advanced example and command line users and script users are going to just absolutely love this one. So what you can do is let's do manage commands. I'm going to create another one and I'm going to call this command part two. This time I'm going to execute a command line in the project directory and I'm going to say add command line. So it's as if I'm typing on the Mac terminal in this case. Um, obviously on other platforms it would be the Windows command or PowerShell and on Linux it would be the terminal. And I can put anything I want in here that I would normally do in the terminal. So let's say for example I want to create three new files and to do that on the Mac, I'm going to use the touch command. So what I can do is I can say, you know, maybe this is part of my setup process. So I can say touch my file one dot text. Okay. And then just to demonstrate how you would chain multiple commands together, I'm just going to actually replicate this here. Of course, there's other ways you can do this, but I just want to keep this simple as the example, right? And then do it again. And so, I'm going to touch three different files. Okay. And then let's say, uh, let's leave it at that for now. And I'm just going to say done editing. So before I run this, let's look at my project folder, two empty folders here that we know of already, nothing else. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the commands. I'm going to go command part two. And if I bring this down here, you can see it opened up to my terminal and it executed what I typed in. So if I do a listing here now, you can see I've got my three new files newly created and let's go ahead and open the folder and here are my three new files in the finder. Okay, now let's step this up a little bit. So I'll tell you what, let's do this. Why don't we get rid of these three files? All right, well, we'll leave the terminal and let's change our command a little bit because obviously that's a very simple example. So let's do this. Let's go in and we'll say, not only do we want to do all that, but at the end of this, in fact, why not do this? Let's just now make it one file. We want to create the new file and then I'm going to use Vim to edit that file. So it's going to create a new file and open the editor at the terminal for me to go ahead and use it. So I'll just say done editing. Let's do it again, run it again. And it's going to create my new file and open Vim. So how awesome is that? Okay. Just going to get out of it here. And just to show you, there's the new file. All right. Now, obviously some of you are already realizing that what we can do here is we are not limited to just things we can type in this line. So I'm not going to demonstrate this, but you could, for example, create a complicated bash cell script. And you can, instead of running all your commands here, you could just execute that shell script. So that is a way that you can really step up the game with not only automation, but some really complex things by taking this use of the command line in Frita and using external scripts and other tools available to you to really step up, you know, on productivity or development or complexity, whatever you need. So let's just go ahead and close that. So that covers, you know, these extra tools across the top here. And I hope this has been helpful. And I hope that you're realizing now that Frita can be a really powerful tool. It, it literally can be a dashboard tool for your development or support units, you know, uh, whatever you need, you can use Frita to develop widgets and scripts and list tools and all these things to really automate a lot of a process and make things available 
so that you know users don't have to go around finding bunches of different tools and everything like that. You can literally lock them down in this environment and hopefully this has helped. Please, uh, if there's anything else you'd like to know about this or you have any suggestions, please share them with us in the comments or feel free to contact me, uh, peterwidham.com, and I'd love to hear about it. And that is part two done.